since I kind of cheated a little bit on my time with the other video, uh, I was able to cram all four examples into it. So we got a, a sample of each of the four major cases of the uh, rational functions that we're dealing with. So what I want to do with this time here is talk a little bit about why we're doing what we're doing when we divide the numerator by the denominator um, for these rational functions. And I'm going to use the information from example C uh, as just sort of our, our framework for discussion here. And it is y equals 4x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x minus 1. Our real goal here is to find out uh, how we can make sort of an educated guess at what the overall graph of this function looks like. Trying to plot all the points involved with, you know, figuring out what uh, y end up, ends up actually being with different input values for x would take a while with all of this sort of complex operation going on with our input uh, variable here, our x variable. So what we want to do is find a, a sort of a framework of what happens with the graph of this function so we can get an idea of what all the values for uh, x and y might be. Now, to get the, the first picture, we can just find the horizontal asymptote, I'm sorry, the vertical asymptote. And the vertical asymptote is usually pretty easy because it's just what happens, you know, what value of x makes the denominator equal to 0. So the vertical asymptote occurs where the denominator uh, equals 0. So in this case, we'd have just 1, right? So where x is 1, we get that vertical asymptote. So we can draw that in real quick just to give us a, the first sort of idea of what this particular function will look like if it were graphed. There's that asymptote right there. So this is our, our vertical asymptote. Then the other thing we could do to figure out uh, sort of where things are going to go is look at the horizontal asymptote. Now the horizontal asymptote, again, what we're looking for is what happens to y as x starts to get really, really big. Well, again, we don't want to have to do all these calculations all the time. We don't want to have to do division every time we put in another number for x. So if we can sort of generalize what happens, that would save us some time. And to generalize that, we need to actually see what we can do about the, the division we're supposed to do with that input variable. Right now, we're supposed to take a variable for x, square it, multiply it by 4, and then add it to that same variable times 3 add to 2, and then divide all that by the variable minus 1. If we can do a generalization of the division ahead of time, then we can simplify what it takes to get that, you know, the values for y. That's where the idea of the horizontal asymptote comes in. So to do that, we're just going to sort of, we're going to do the division ahead of time before we start putting in values for x. And that's where we run it through that, that long division like we did in the other video to give us an idea of a simplified version of that same function. If we run it through the long division, we end up with y equals 4x plus 7 plus 9 over x minus 1. And again, you can watch the other video to see that step by step if you like. Um, now we can take a look a little more easily and see what happens as we start putting in other values for x. As we start putting in really big values for x here, we end up with you know, something like 9 over uh, a million minus 1, right? So 9 over 999,999, that's going to be an incredibly small number. We're basically going to be adding 0 to what we already started with there, right? So really, in the long run, this, this term over here isn't going to matter. The bigger x gets, the less this is going to matter, the closer this is going to come to 0. So as we're getting a picture of what's going to happen in the long run, we can start to ignore that. So that tells us that really what we're looking for is, uh, you know, the values that we're going to get are all going to be related to 4 times our input value plus 7. And we can actually plot that. That's a line. That's a linear equation, right? So we have our b, our y, our y intercept of 7. It's going to be up here somewhere. And then the slope of our line is 4. So it's going to be, you know, up 4 over 1 or down 4 back 1, right? 1, 2, 3, 4 back 1. So we're going to have this line over here that looks something like this. And that tells us that as we plot this actual function, it can't hit either of these two situations here. So we can go ahead and start plugging in values if we want and get real numbers and find where the actual function goes. But already we know that it's going to be a shape that's going to fit within one of these things. Maybe it's going to do something like this. 
or maybe it's going to do something like this. Yeah, it whatever is going to happen, it's going to fit within these two lines. So all we need is a couple of points to figure out where that function is actually going to occur, and it saves us a lot of calculation.